Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. Today, millennial money just took it to another level. I was actually really surprised when I saw this thumbnail because guess who it is? Jason Lee. And if you're thinking to yourself, Graham, who's Jason Lee? Why is this a big deal? Why should I watch this episode? Well, guess what, guys? Jason Lee is the owner of Jubilee Media. Yeah. Mind blown here. Of all the videos we like to react to here, the world's just collided. We got Jubilee Media and we got CNBC Make It Millennial Money. Just just combined into one, making probably one of the best episodes that I've reacted to in probably quite some time. And the title of this video is Living on Dollar Sign 97K a year in Los Angeles. Wait for it. Millennial money. So with that said, guys, if you're as excited about this episode as I am, make sure to destroy the like button. That said, let's go and start the video. Money is definitely something I was worried about when I quit my job because the truth was that there wasn't a great business plan when we were starting Jubilee as a nonprofit. That's interesting. I had no idea they started Jubilee Media as a nonprofit. I'm wondering if maybe there's a few tax advantages of just saying it's a nonprofit and then you go and spend all of the money on Ferraris and Rolls Royce. No, I'm kidding. Seriously, Jubilee is incredible. They've given me so many opportunities. They create some really good content and just like consistently every day that we could react to on the channel. So uh, I, I owe a lot to Jubilee. Jubilee Media is a digital media company that creates content and shows and now film and TV and we hope that one day that Jubilee will become you know the Disney for empathy. I think so. They could do it. Listen, their setup is so top-notch. I think now I've, I've been in, in three Jubilee videos and I gotta say their entire team is just they're all a 10 out of 10. Like everyone is really happy to be there and Jubilee's content I gotta say is fantastic. The only ones I don't like lately are the, some of the Zoom videos because you just miss some of that element of just being in person but regardless I know that's only temporary they do some really great stuff. I have no doubt they're going places. And I wanted to rather pay people more money, treat people well, and build something that we were really proud of. And then as we've been growing and Jubilee has become more successful, you know, we've ended up right now at $97,000. There we go. See, that's a good business owner. Here's the thing with a business like this, it makes more sense to reinvest your money back into the business instead of taking it out. And then all of a sudden the business is suffering because you're driving around in yachts every day to go to Whole Foods or Erewhon and spend $15 on a, on a broccoli smoothie. No, he's going to make more money putting it back in the business and that way the business could grow even bigger. I think watching my parents, I saw that they were always really conscientious about money and they did a great job of saving, but something that we never had an opportunity to talk about was what it meant to invest even. Yeah, I don't know why money is like such a taboo topic. I mean, I would, listen, I would love if I were a kid at the dinner table. I mean, my family didn't really talk too much about money either. I mean, I would have loved it if I were 10 years old, we sit down at the table and we're like, all right. Let's uh, let's balance the checkbook tonight. Let's talk about the bills, that, that HBO bill now. Let's save some money on that. Let's invest it instead. Let's buy some Apple stock pre-split. You know, that's the stuff that I think kids, you know, that's the stuff that kids really need to be learning about these days. See, there we go, they're doing it right. Jason and his wife, Melody, live together in a one-bedroom apartment. Listen, Los Angeles, the rents are so expensive there. Chances are even his one-bedroom apartment, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say $2,300 a month. That's my guess. Just, just knowing the market of Los Angeles, the market for a one-bedroom, he's probably not in like one bedroom in Beverly Hills for five grand a month. I'm gonna guess, good area, one bedroom, 22. Oh, wow, see, there we go. $2,800 a month, which they split evenly. So this is good. What I would probably be doing if I were in his shoes is, uh, you know, I know they rent a big warehouse down in uh, Los Angeles. I'd probably just live in the warehouse. Listen, I would love it. Just one big open room. You work there, sleep in the corner. You got like a little kitchen, you got a bed. Listen, as long as I have a kitchen, a shower, and a spot to film from, and a couch, it's all I need. We generally have always agreed on our finances. Not down to the dollar, but how do we want to use our money and what do we care about? All right, so let's take a look at this. So we got savings and investments, $1,840 a month with a T. Savings, Roth IRA, fantastic. Stocks, angel investing. And then we got, ha ha ha, cryptocurrency. I'm all for it. If anything, I'd be probably spending more money on that sort of stuff, but you know what, that's just me. 
Then we got rent, $1,400 a month with a barbell, his portion of a one bedroom apartment, that's fine. Discretionary, $1,000 a month on discretionary. What is that? Donation, travel, hobbies. You know what I would say? Cryptocurrency is a hobby. So spend some of that money on cryptocurrency. That's a fun hobby there. Then we got food, $380 a month, that, that's fine. Car and gas, $350, utilities, $150, insurance, $85, phone. Wow, $50 a month for the phone bill, that's fantastic. Subscriptions, $23 a month with a triangle. Spotify, HBO Max. You know, I'm surprised he's not paying for YouTube Premium. I gotta say, I splurged, I did it, I did it, I paid for YouTube Premium. It is actually, it is really nice. But other than that, I would say, his budget's good. The only thing I would do is take down the discretionary, spend more money on the investments, because I think investing could be a hobby. You know, sometimes that she wants me to spend less money on some investments or on cryptocurrency, for example. Uh, things that sometimes are more risky. No, 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 don't listen to her. Listen, if, she, if she's saying don't invest in the cryptocurrency, that's when you know it's good. That's when you know you gotta double down. Like, uh, let's say, MILF coin. You'd be like, honey, we, we, got, we got to invest in MILF. MILF is about to skyrocket to the moon and uh, $10,000 right now. We're going to turn that into $80 because MILF is crap. Don't invest in MILF. Listen, if he's investing in MILF, I agree with his wife. But if he's buying, let's say, Nano, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, eh, you know what? Maybe you could play it a little riskier there. I thought that that is what it means to be successful, to be rich, would be to make over $100,000. I had spent my entire kind of high school and college career, my entire life, working towards that goal. And then slowly, I think, I realized that that's not necessarily what I wanted to do. Geez, look at that, Barack Obama. This guy is, uh, this guy's gone places. The idea of leaving my successful, traditional job to do something completely different honestly scared me to death and that I had worked so hard up until this point to do something that other people quote unquote deemed to be successful. And what if now I became the laughing stock of you know, my friends or my community or my family? Here's the thing, I've realized that nobody ever criticizes you for going and trying something even if you fail. Because I gotta say like 99% of people out there never even try, they don't have the courage to go and do that. So when you actually go and put yourself out there like that, most of the time people are really supportive of it even if it doesn't work out. So I always say, just go and do it, try it, it's worth the risk and if you fail, so what, try something else. When I was first raising capital, I went to so many different investors, I went to so many different VCs, and it was no after no, 20 or 30 no's in a row. Wow, look at that, $650,000. I would think that for, for the types of content they're doing, they could just bootstrap the whole thing. They could really do it with like 30 grand, get some cameras, get some help, slowly grow it over time, reinvest the profits. I'm a firm believer that it doesn't cost $650,000 to start a company like this. But obviously the 650 grand back then, well worth it considering that they have how many, five million, six million subscribers now? So I just looked them up, 6.32 million subscribers. So it's working. Then again, you could go and look at Cody Co's channel, run such a lean operation, but ah, uh, I mean, it's just, he rakes in the views. It's nuts. But I have a feeling Jubilee is really going for the production side of things, where it's like Cody Co's channel, you go there for him. For Jubilee, you go for the actual entertainment value that maybe could be replicated over and over and over again, really depending on whatever they want to do. Because of COVID, we had to postpone our wedding, but we are able to have a small family ceremony and we're hoping to still have a wedding uh, later this year. Ooh, Jason. Do you know what I'm gonna say? I'm going to uh, invite myself to the wedding. If, uh, if you want us to come along and support, we, we would do that. I would bring a nice little coffee wedding gift too. So uh, yeah, just let me know. I think one thing that I'm really proud of is actually that my wife makes more money than I do. She also supports a lot of the work that we do as Jubilee. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing though. Yes, yeah, she might be making more money right now, like cash, let's say every single year, making more money, but He's paying himself a salary, then investing the rest back into the business. I bet if he were to like, hey, let me go and sell Jubilee Media right now, how much is that thing worth? I don't know, what, 
$10 million, $8 million. It's got to be a pretty big amount. So even though he's making $97,000 a year on paper, on the back end with Jubilee Media and his ownership in that company, I bet he's doing really well. We try to save or invest at least 30% of our income. There we go, look at that, $1,100 a month to equity, cryptocurrency, and angel investing. My only critique here is that you make sure you max out that Roth IRA, because I'm a firm believer, like, taxes are going up. There's just, there's no way the taxes are gonna get any lower than they are today. So if you can protect yourself in the future, go and max out that Roth IRA, contribute $6,500 a year, do that every single year, and in the future, you're gonna be very glad you did that. 300 a month on travel. Jason, no, 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 no. Listen, with the amount of money that Jubilee Media spends, there's gotta be a way that you could just rack up a whole bunch of credit card points and then spend all of that on travel. I mean, I have a feeling at this point with all the spending of Jubilee Media, you could have easily traveled around the world multiple times, first class, with those cool little cabins that allow you to like take a shower in them. You could have done that multiple times just with points. So I would say $300 a month on travel, too much, Use credit card points, take that down to zero, then take that $300 a month, put that back into other investments. When I'm outdoors or when I'm in the ocean, you're literally not able to be thinking about work. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's so refreshing for me to do some of those things. That's cool, I love that. That for me is the aquarium. It's so difficult. Every single time I walk to the kitchen, I look over, and there's the aquarium. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm just staring at it for 20 minutes, not even realizing where the time went. Or like there's a little filter pad, I gotta, I gotta go and change out the filter floss. Then all of a sudden an hour goes away. It's one of those things though, it's so enjoyable. Of course I wanna make money, of course I wanna be respected, but for me, I wanna make a difference. And I wanna make something that I'm proud of. And I wanna say that I've left an impact. Oh yeah, he absolutely has. And for anyone who's not already subscribed to Jubilee, I'll link to him down below in the description. Go and subscribe to their videos. They post some really, really cool stuff that I just enjoy reacting to here on the channel. So I gotta say, Jason, fantastic episode. As far as my complaints on this, I really only got two. Number one, you gotta max out that Roth IRA every single year, $6,500 a year. Otherwise, it's going to waste. Number two, $300 a month on travel, nah. Credit card points, just go and use the credit card points, travel for free, and then just take that $300 a month, invest it back into startups. That would be my only recommendation because otherwise Jason's doing everything fantastic. And again, I owe so much to Jubilee, not only for having me on the channel, but also just being able to give us some really good content to react to as well. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also feel free to add me on Instagram. I post it pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there as in the podcast, The Iced Coffee Hour. New episodes being posted every single Sunday. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time.